Hello and welcome to the video on computer networks, network components, unit 11. As you can see, I'm rocking the Spider-Man t-shirt today, um, so I really ought to be talking about the web, but maybe not, let's see what I do there. Okay, so, um, let's get going. Unit 11, computer networks. What do you need to make a network? So, you need to have certain components in a computer network, otherwise it's not going to work. If you can't connect the computers together, it's not a network. If you don't have computers to connect, it's not a network. If you don't, can't connect them in the correct way, it's not a network. So we need to make sure that we've got those things. So some of the things we're going to be talking about um, will relate to whether or not you can connect the things together. Some of them will be related to being able to control the network itself. Some of them are going to be sharing resources across the network, so like a shared printer. Um, and not all of them are needed for a functioning network. So we've got a whole list of things here. Some of them are optional. You can still have a working network without these things, but it might be an advantage to have them depending on what your network is for. So let's go. Cables. So obviously, cables, they are the fastest way of connecting computers together on your network. You can do things with wireless, but it's a lot slower. So networks are the fastest way of connecting, also the most reliable. And there are three main types of cable that we need to worry about. First one is Ethernet cable, which are the ones that look like this, which are the ones that are plugged into the back of your machines. Very, very commonly used. They're mainly used because they're pretty quick, they're also very cheap, and they're pretty reliable. So they're quite durable, they'll last quite a long time. So cheap, fast, reliable, fantastic, compromise. That's what almost everybody uses. You might also, though, have fiber optic cable. Fiber optic cable is what if some of you have got BT fiber broadband or fiber optic broadband. It's um, a different type of cable that works with, um, it's like a flexible glass tube and it bounces light down, it ref the light reflects down the tube. Um, because of that, you can get a much higher bandwidth, you can get a lot more information down the cable, so the cables are a lot faster. Um, they are, however, also a lot more expensive and a little bit more delicate. You can bend them and twist them about, but because they've got glass inside them, if you twist them too tightly, the glass will break and the cable won't work anymore. So, you've also got, for the last one, coaxial cable. This is horrible stuff that nobody really uses anymore. It's the kind of cable that if you have a TV that plugs into a terrestrial aerial rather than a satellite dish, in fact it probably works from the satellite dish as well, it's that kind of cable that you use. It used to be used in computer networks, um, but was a bit of a nightmare, it's quite slow, it's not very reliable and not many people use it now, but it is another one that you need to be aware of. Uh, so the main thing you're talking about is speed versus cost. So coax cable, very, very cheap, but very slow. Ethernet cable, pretty quick, but a little bit more expensive, but still pretty cheap. Fiber optic cable, very, very fast, really quite expensive. So that's how you need to think about the different types of cable. Next. Network switch. So this is where you're going to plug all your cables into. It's the central point of your network. So if you have a network that uses wired connections, you will need to plug all of your cables into something so they all join up together. There's no point in just having them hanging around. They need to be plugged into something and the switch is what you're going to be using. Um, they come in a range of port numbers. This one, if you look at it, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a different bit. So we've got seven main wires going into there. So that would be a seven port switch. Um, you can get 24 port switches, 48 port switches, four port switches, many different types. The amount of ports is how many things you can have on your network plugged in, whether that be a computer or a printer or a server or whatever else you might have plugged into the network. So you need to make sure that you've got enough ports for a network as it is, and also if you want to expand it in the future, otherwise you'll have to buy a new one. Um, the more ports you have, the more expensive they are. So it's kind of, once again, the amount of um, stuff you can do with it against the cost. But like I said, everything you have on your network will need to be connected to that switch in some way. Then you have the client machines. So these are the machines that when you are a user, the ones that you work on. So in our IT room, they're the ones around the edge of the room that you use. They're not the ones that control the network, they're the ones that people use to access the network. So you log onto a computer, you do some work, that's a client machine. You can log onto a different computer and do some work, that's another client machine. So they're all client machines, the ones that you use. Um, and you need as many of them as you have people on your network at the same time. So if you've got a business with 
eight people, all of which need to be on the network at the same time, you need to have eight client machines, otherwise people will have to share. Um, if they're not all in at the same time, so if you had eight members of staff, four work during the day, four work during the night, if you had some kind of weird thing that needed to be open 24 hours a day, um, then you might only need four, because only four people are on the network at once. But however many people you have on the network at once is how many client machines you need to have. Maybe with an extra one spare, just in case one of them goes wrong. It's all handy as well. Um, that's pretty much it. So they're the ones that you log into, and you need as many of them as you have people that need to log onto your network at once. So next, the server. This is the other big machine that um, locks into a network, but you don't need to have it on every single network. When you look at things like peer-to-peer -peer networks and bus networks, they won't necessarily have a server on them. These are only used in what they call server-based networks. So it's a central location where you can store all of your information and everything gets connected to that server. So whenever you log into a computer at college, it logs into the server, all of your work is stored on that server. So that means you can get to it from wherever you log on. If you didn't have a server, you'd log onto a machine, you'd do some work, you'd save it, it would be saved on that machine. If you then went to a different machine and logged on again, your work wouldn't be there because it wasn't saved in a central location. So what you have is you have a server, you log into the server, all your documents are stored on the server, and it also does lots of other things. So it also controls all, your, all the accounts. So when you make new accounts or change passwords, change login restrictions, um, sort out your access rights, controls all of that. It will hold all of your files, so you can get to them from wherever you are, and they might also hold um, other files that everybody on the network needs to be able to get hold of. Um, and it allows you to log in from any machine, and it will also sometimes have other devices attached to it, which it then shares across the network, like printers or routers. So that's the server. Very important part of a server-based network. If it's not, you don't have a server, you haven't got a server-based network. Easy to remember. Next one, so these are the shared devices. So up until now, we've had stuff that forms part of the network. These things are shared devices that you can have on the network, which then you can share whatever they do out through the network. So you might have a printer that you can let everybody on the network use, but we'll go into more detail about each one then. So first of all, we have the printer. So you can share them across the network. You can have uh, standalone printers, the printers that we have in the corridor around the corner from here, I'm in 213 at the moment, um, those printers have network capability, so they can be plugged directly into a switch with a cable. Um, if you don't have that network functionality, then you would probably need to plug your printer into the server and then share that printer on the server with the rest of the network. So that will be a way, those are the two ways that you would share those things. One is it will have its own um, network stuff inside it um, and it can just be a standalone printer. The other one is it will need to be attached to another machine and then it will be shared from that machine. Um, you also have drivers for your printer. Each time you want to make a printer work on a different machine, like one of the client machines, you will need to install drivers for that to work. Now they may well be automatically installed over the network, they may be part of Windows, you may have to load the drivers on the machine separately but you will need to install a driver for the printer to work. But once it works, you should be able to print to it at any time. Next one. Network hard drives. So if you don't have a server, these are quite popular because this is somewhere where you can save all of your work in a central location. So it's a, basically it is a hard drive with a network connection. So anybody that's on the network can access that hard drive. Uh, a lot of these, um, if you've got a lot of home media streaming going on, um, a lot of people will save movies and films and DVDs, that kind of stuff, onto a hard drive, a network hard drive, and then they use that to play on different media centres around the house. So they'll have maybe one of the Sonos systems, which are the wireless speaker systems. They'll have one of those, and it accesses all of the songs that it plays from a central network hard drive. And you can also have um, your normal files on there. So if you're at home and you've got a couple of different computers, you don't want to keep switching information between them, you just save the stuff onto the network hard drive and then you can get to it from either one. Uh, quite a lot of time, they're also used for archiving or backups because the transfer rate, because it's not part of your computer, is going to be a little bit slower. So 
you might use this to save stuff that you don't use on a regular basis, or you might use it as a backup. You can put all of your information on this hard drive, then if your computer blows up for some reason, this isn't going to be affected, because it's not part of your computer, and it's probably in a different room. So it's a good way of backing up your work and keeping it safe. Wireless access points. Okay, so this is what's going to give you the opportunity to connect to the network without a cable. So you connect over Wi-Fi. Um, so if you want to connect to your phone, if you want to connect to your laptop, if you want to connect to your tablet, or anything else, Kindle, ebook reader, whatever else you might have that could be wireless, you're going to need to have a wireless access point on your network somewhere so people can connect to the network. Um, it is slower than wired connections, um, and they're not so reliable either because if you've got walls and things in the way, um, they start to reduce the amount of um, signal you get. You've probably had it in houses and in college where you try to get onto the Wi-Fi. There's certain parts of the college where you can't connect to it because the signal stops far enough because you haven't got one of these access points near enough to you. They're in quite a lot of the rooms, but um, not everywhere, so that will stop you from being able to connect. Next thing is the router. Just ignore that. It'll go away eventually. Um, so a router is what provides connection to the internet. So a router connects your network to the internet. Doesn't do it necessarily do anything else. Doesn't necessarily it won't necessarily share that information with anybody until it's plugged into a network. But it actually connects to the internet and provides your internet connection. Um, you can connect to the network using either cables. This one you can see has got Ethernet ports in the back of it. So you can plug directly into it and get the internet connection sent over a wire. It's also got the wireless antennas on there as well. So you could also connect that um, via Wi-Fi. And some of these might have a firewall built on, into them as well. Remember, a firewall is something that stops people getting onto your network if they don't have um, authorised access. And sort of people are hackers and things like that getting in. So you may have a firewall built into that router. Okay, last thing, hopefully. Uh, it's a pain. Come on, next one, please. There we go, right. To finish off, and this isn't necessarily to do with network components, but this is something that many, many people make a mistake on. It's the difference between internet and Wi Fi. Wi Fi, like we said, with the wireless access point, is just a way of connecting to a network without using a cable. It doesn't mean that you get an internet connection. Wi-Fi doesn't always come with an internet connection. Wi-Fi just means that you can connect to the network and you don't need a cable. If you don't have an internet connection on that network, you don't get any internet. The problem is, all the different places like the college and pubs and restaurants and all the other places that provide you with wireless internet access call it Wi-Fi. And you are connecting to their network with Wi-Fi, but you're using their router to get the internet access. And people get mixed up, and they think that because you have Wi-Fi, that must mean that you have internet. It doesn't necessarily work like that. You have to have a router to provide an internet connection, and then share that with a Wi-Fi connection to get Wi-Fi on your wireless devices and get the internet on your wireless device. Lots of routers, like the one we saw earlier, will have a wireless access point built into them, so you can connect to them over Wi-Fi, some of them don't, some of them will just have a cable. So you have a box, it connects to the internet, the router connects to the internet, and it then sends that internet connection to another computer via a cable. There may be no Wi-Fi involved in that process, but you still have internet. And it's something that lots of people get mixed up, you get Wi-Fi, you just assume that Wi-Fi means internet, and it doesn't always. So don't put that in your assignments, because we'll have to mark you down. We don't want that. That's a lot for network components, so we'll stop that one out. And thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you in the next video.